they just go on crazy adventures. Like the Booga Fish is a storyline all about how Curls get sucked under this lake by this huge fish and what ensues in that. Um, and there's another storyline um, called The Primal Brain, and it's all about like if you have an idea um, and you want to just like make it now, you totally envision it in your brain. Well, what would happen if you had a printable brain? Ideas could just come out like crazy, and I want to invent that one day. So that's why I made the comic strip about how she invented that, and how girls invented that. Um, then we also have a book called The Legettes, which I do with Joe Carabeo, and that's all about burlesque in the future, and the Legettes are trying to save the universe from a human holocaust. And so basically, we only have issue one out right now, but it's amazing because like, I saw this burlesque act called the Pontiani Sisters, and I just was immersed with the world of burlesque, and I was like, I want to do that. Oh wait, I don't want to take my clothes off in front of a whole bunch of people. So I figured, hey, like, let's make a comic book about that so I can live in the burlesque world and not have to you know, take my clothes off. And I totally respect the girls that do, it's just that I personally don't think I can handle that. <laughs> But I, I love burlesque and I'm inspired by burlesque performers and circus performers and that type of stuff. And plus we merge that with sci-fi. And so Joe always likes to say that it is cabaret mixed with Joe. Cabaret mixed with Blade Runner. Blade Runner. So that was his like inspiration. And he, that's how he pitches it to people. So um you know, I think that that's a pretty awesome mix of, and also it's, it's great to like reference a movie like that. So people know what you're already talking about and they're already familiar with something, whereas like if you're talking to somebody about the Legettes, they're like, what's the Legettes? So Cabaret and Blade Runner equals Legettes. That's the best way to <laughs> say that to somebody who doesn't know. Um, and then we also have Kid Roxy and Black Magic Tales, and those are both sister books of each other with the same characters in it, but they're at different parts in their lives. And Kid Roxy, they're in eighth grade, and they're very innocent, and it's all about, you know, back to school, and there's these two twin sisters, and they are basically, you know, rivals now at their new school, because one of them got sucked into the popular group, and the other one is still kind of like, okay, I just basically lost my best friend's sister, and where do I go from here? And then we take those same characters, we put them in the Black Magic Tales, years in advance, and they are career criminals. So what ensues from the innocence to the crime, and so basically we have those books going on at the same time. That's pretty fun too. So what inspires our storylines? Um, burlesque, animals, basically things that I'd want to draw, and sci-fi, and then just like the everyday life of like crime in eighth grade <laughs> in school. And just kind of expand on it. I think that uh, you know, I think artists also kind of get inspiration from other artists. You know, I think we've been kind of talking so much about doing stories, but what about the artistic style? You know, I, I think uh, I'm part of a, a, D, a, a comics creators collective in the DC area called the DC Conspiracy. And we get together about once a month, um, and we just kind of bring projects that we're working on. You know, we usually have a few drinks and just kind of chat about. Stories we're working on. Sometimes we look, you look for you know collaborative efforts and things like that. And uh, that's just a great place to, to kind of see what folks are working on and, and uh, to get kind of inspired. Um, and it's great because we kind of challenge each other a little bit. You know, so if I see someone do something you know, really great, and I'm kind of saying to myself, you know, I'm gonna try to like do the same thing, maybe even one up this person. And then the next thing you know, that person comes back and just you know blows your mind. You know, with, for example, just as an example of our brewmaster, you know, my friend Andrew Cohen uh, drew the story, and it's just like, the way I kind of envisioned the style that he was going to use, that he had typically has for it, was nothing what he did. And it was, totally blew me away, and it was just awesome. Um, and then when you go to small press uh, comic shows to kind of uh, meet your colleagues in, in the world and see the different things they do, you know, uh, Molly's style is, uh, is pretty different from Carolyn's style, but they're equally as magnificent, you know, the, the detailing that Molly does in her work and the, the brush strokes that uh, Carolyn has in her work is just amazing. So, you know, it's, you, you kind of learn from each other, you try to emulate each other and try to build upon you know, other people's uh, contributions in this. And I think one thing that's probably changed for your generation of, I'm just going to use a shorthand cartoonist, 
is that um, technology has made things much easier to get it out in front of people, whether it's print on demand to print your own comic or to uh, put a web comic up on the web. <coughs> web comic up on the web. Good. Put a comic strip up on the web where people can start feeding, giving you feedback instantly, whether you want it or not. Um, can each of you, this is not on the list, but can each of you talk briefly about um, how you see technology helping you get your material out there? Or not, if you don't want to. Well, having a webcomic, you know, basically you just upload an image. How hard can that be? So it, it, it makes it relatively easy to post something, and get, you do get feedback from people because email is so easy as well. So in that respect, web comics are awesome. But then it's also like, I like the printed as well, back to the traditional. So what I like to do is, you know, as, as long as I have a whole bunch of the web comics, I can like make, make a whole set or make a whole storyline and then I'll just print them based on like each storyline. So I've been doing smaller ones. And um, once I've reached like 200, then I have it in a larger book. Um, and then as far as like reaching out to people just with a, a regular you know printed comic, that's a lot harder. Um, even if you go to shows like SPX, which is Small Press Expo in Bethesda, Maryland, I definitely recommend going there. It's usually every fall, um, and it's it's hard to get in people's hands because even at Small Press Expo, you're competing with a whole bunch of other cartoonists, and it is one big community. But at the same time, you might only have this much space of table in a large room at a hotel or at some convention center or, or at New York Comic Con. So when you get to larger shows, you start competing against very large people that are like Bruce Campbell at New York Comic Con or... Um, Bruce Campbell's very large. <laughs> yes, he's very large. Um, Bruce Campbell, and he doesn't even make comics, but he's been in comics, but you know, you're dealing with like the celebrity level of Joss Whedon's there, and you know, all these crazy people on TV are there. So I definitely recommend like starting out at smaller shows and seeing how things go from there. But basically, you're still getting competition anywhere, and then on the internet, obviously, you're getting tons of competition from people that can just instantly click off your site after reading your comic in 10 seconds. So you have to hold their attention somehow. And gaining an audience is, is I'd, I'd say it's probably easier with the web and also anyone from any country, obviously, anyone with an internet connection can see your work rather than just sit, having people that went to Small Press Expo seeing your work. <laughs> Yeah, Beth, I agree. <laughs> um, but the, the internet does allow you to have a place that somebody can always find you. If somebody is reminded of your work somehow, finds your book, they can go to your website and keep up with you if they wish to. And you know, it just a, kind of a, gives you a kind of a, a home base. Um, and also, as you were saying, the print on demand um, technology now is you know, how I've printed my compilation and you know it just it allows people to get your stuff easier if you aren't at, a, at an expo show or if they weren't able to find you behind the crowd where Bruce Campbell was they can order your stuff online so that's kind of how it's affected me. Um, I've, uh, typically I, I what I use the web for currently is just for, for my blog where I kind of post little snippets of books I'm working on, maybe a panel too, just to kind of promote my book and kind of have it out there, let people kind of know I'm working on something. Um, Facebook, the social media, Facebook's worked very well for me. It kind of lets people know that I'm working on stuff and you kind of get, get a following that way. Um, I've kind of dabbled a little bit in web comics. Uh, and the reason for that is I think that's you know, an emerging field. People are, are still trying to figure out um, not only in comics, but in, whether it's newspapers or books or whatever, how to use um, how to use this medium to, to reach people um, versus the more traditional ways. Um, you know, that said, you know, I'm kind of very interested in, in exploring it and see where it kind of goes. Actually, uh, one project I'm be kicking off uh, very soon is um, it's it's we call tentatively called District Comics, and it's going to be an anthology of. Uh, of stories related to the history of uh, DC. And so it'll be a whole range of, of topics, and it can be anything from from when uh, the city was founded to something uh, that's more current. 
and you know we'll be looking for uh, submissions for stories for that. And that the idea there is to have it at least initially exclusively on the web. That would be kind of a free resource. And you know, one thing comic creators are always kind of thinking about is, okay, well, how can I make some money, or at least how can I cover my costs for this? You know, printing is expensive. You know, you got to find a printer. It's got to be printed. It's got to be shipped. It's got to be stitched and trimmed and all that. In a web comic, you kind of it's much cheaper. It still costs you something, but it's not as, as intensive, and it allows you, as, as, uh, as Carolyn said, to reach a broader audience um, than you could probably reach with with print. Um, a lot of comics, comic artists are kind of doing that these days, kind of putting their comics initially as a web comic to kind of get people to, to become familiar with it, and then when they're done with it, they find a printer or they print it themselves and they have a, a, a published book. But in terms of uh, the way I use it is kind of to promote it, whether it's my book, uh, an upcoming book, or the stages of a book. Um, Uh, we have a few questions left here on the list um, that are mostly technical, and then we'll open it to questions of the crowd. Um, one question was, writers have a word count as an indicator of length. Is the number of panels the measure of that in graphic novels? No. <laughs> the number of panels is pretty much independent of anything except for every once in a while you see a major comic book company with one panel per page. That means that the artist wants to sell the artwork afterwards for more money. They call them splash pages. Um, so, but the question then continues, how long is a typical graphic novel? And I'm going to say, uh, like Abraham Lincoln said about his legs, it's never long enough to reach the ground. I mean, a graphic novel is a marketing term. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't even mean, like, as you mentioned before, it doesn't have to be a novel. Right. Even by, the, you know, the trickster anthology is an anthology, but it's, it's, it's labeled as a graphic novel. It's, a, it's just a very generic term. Right. So, What's that, about 180 pages? Uh, uh, 230. 230. So, you know, I mean, part of it depends on how thick your paper is. Um, there is no real length of a graphic novel, which means that the term doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and I'm on a couple of listservs where librarians try to debate where they shelve stuff in the library, uh, a couple of comic book listservs, and um, they're not happy about the term either. Um, the next question is actually um, probably changes for everybody, but it notes that a writer usually goes through multiple re revisions as a standard practice. Um, but how does that work with the added effort of drawing everything? Um, does one start with a complete storyline and then draw it once it resolved, or just start drawing and see what happens? And we touched a little bit about this. Um, but it's kind of an interesting point. Um, do you guys go back and revise stuff when it's time to publish, or do you clean up something on the web that appears 